Welcome to BizTech's Health and Wellness Show. Today we feature Medic Footprints Malaysia, an organization by doctors for doctors. Here in Malaysia with doctors' well-being being the center of their focus. And, and with us is one of their co-founders, Dr. Selena Chu. Welcome to the show, Selena. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for having me. Now, Selena, give us an overview of Medic Footprints and what you do. Okay, so Medic Footprints is an organization, it's a social enterprise by doctors for doctors, and the focus is um, doctors' well-being. So when you talk about well-being, it encompasses everything from emotional health, career, physical well-being, because ultimately the, the most basic um, the ba most basic needs of everyone is to be able to put food on the table, right? So yeah, yeah so that's when career comes in because everyone wants to have a better career. I mean, who wants to be stuck in a job where you're just going through the grind day in, day out and not having an outcome? So that, that would tie in with the emotional well-being as well. So that's what we do. We are here to help doctors and we do this by connecting them with better job opportunities because we find that doctors somehow have been taught to just put themselves in a box, which is the clinical box. and they, we, we, I feel that we've been trained to think that we can only prosper in this small little box. But actually, there's so much out there for us that it's just not ventured or not spoke about. And also one of the things with, with the medical profession is the fact that traditionally, the best and the brightest go into the medical profession. Um, and then bright kids are kind of uh, encouraged or strongly encouraged or forced by their parents to go into the medical profession and become doctors, even though they may not have an interest. So I suppose that's one of the reasons why alternative careers, then they, they go in and they realize, hey, this is not for me. And then they're kind of lost. They either have to continue doing what they're doing because that's their training and that's what their parents or their society or society expects them to do. But their mental well-being is then affected. Yes, I, I totally agree because People think that, okay, to be a doctor, you just have to be straight A students. But to the, there's so much stress that comes with being a doctor because you're dealing with humans, you're dealing with connections with patients, you're dealing with bosses, you're dealing with colleagues. So in med school, all your thought is that, um, you know, anatomy, physiology, it, it's very theory, but the whole human connection, it, it's just not Although in theory, it, state, it says that, oh, build a rapport with patients. But, you know, in theory, it's easy. But when you come out and then you realize, wow, this is the real world. And that's where the shock comes. Because, you see, university, it's made in a way where it's very conducive for learning. But it does not show you what the outside world actually looks like. Right? So, yeah, a lot of us that comes in, like for me, I really wanted to be a doctor, like ever since I could remember. But once I got in and I realized like something is just not there. I'm not feeling fulfilled. You know, okay, yes, I'm seeing patients day in, day out. I, 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 I went into the profession thinking I'm saving lives. But once you go into the profession, then you see that there are so many other things. Why are patients behaving the way they, they are? Like, I'm trying to save you. Why are you treating me this way? You know, that there are a lot of all this dynamics that's going on that you cannot make sense of. So I think that's where, you know, expectation and reality just doesn't jive. And that's where a lot of this issue comes. Okay, and I'm going to um, get your insights into your personal journey as a, 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 a doctor comes in. Uh, comes in. And, um, but before that, what was your catalyst behind setting up Medic Footprints? Okay, so Medic Footprints was actually set up based on my personal experience, like what I went through and the, the challenges and problems that I faced and I, I couldn't find a, a solution. Like there was just no solution. So I, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about my story. Um, okay, please go ahead. So I, I, I grew up, uh, my mom's a nurse, so I grew up around the hospital a lot and I thought, wow, doctors are so revered. You know, I want to be a doctor someday. And that's all I ever thought of, becoming a doctor. Even in, in school, everyone knew that I was going to be a doctor. All my friends called me doc, you know, even before I went to med school. Uh -huh. Now, 
Yeah, so when I finally got into med school, I mean, I, I, it was, it was a pressure cooker because, you know, there's so much to learn and there's so little time. Although it was stressful, I kept telling myself that, no, don't worry, um, things will be better when you get home. So fast forward, I graduated. I actually graduated top three of my class um, of 250 students. Oh, congratulations. Thanks. So now I went into, I came back, I joined housemanship. Housemanship was tough. I, I wouldn't uh, deny it, but I had very good support system. Like I, I was in a place where it was just right. I had friends, I had people to talk to. Now, um, after that, I went into, um, when I started my MO ship, I was in district. I, I, I was also in district posting, like in a district clinic in Seattle. And then I came back and decided, I went back to a tertiary hospital and decided I was going to be uh, in ICU and anesthesia because I, I actually enjoyed that posting, you know? So from then on, I was like, it was drilled in me. I'm going to be an intensivist because I really love the ICU. So somewhere in 2016, I had a slip disc because um, I'm so active. I have no idea how, how that happened. Even after I had the slip disc, uh, actually, I didn't even know I had a slip disc because it was not a very classic uh, presentation, like, you know, what, what we learned in med school. So I didn't know I had that. And I still continued going to, for my on calls. I was in so much pain, but I just dragged myself to complete my call. So, I mean, nobody knew I was, I was in so much pain. And oh, how did you highlight that to your superiors? I think um, at that time, I, I wasn't, I was trying to make sense of it. Like, why am I in so much pain? And it was already too late to find somebody because it was like, um, so it's Saturday night, I'm on call on Sunday. It's almost impossible to find like a replacement so late. So I thought like, okay, I'm in the ICU. ICU is not so busy. I think I can just drag myself and just do the call. I'll just be in bed. When I need to, I'll just go and see a patient, right? That that's that was so that that is the mindset that most doctors have, you know, this complex where um, I can do this like regardless of how painful it is, I can push through. I, I think that is that 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 kind of mentality, you know, you don't want to burden your colleagues, and yet you feel the sense that you need to do your duty, right? I need to pull my weight. So I went. I dragged myself through the on-call. I have no idea how I made it through. And the pain was still so excruciating. I would say it's eight out of 10. And then wow. after that, I decided I'm going to, I need to go and see a doctor because I realized that that um, I, I couldn't move certain muscles in my legs and walking was so hard. I, I actually had to drag my feet, um, my my right leg. So when I went and saw a doctor, um, I, I did an MRI and all that. And they saw like, oh, wow, it's a really bad compression. But Fortunately, I was given an option to not have to do the surgery yet. Um, I could just observe. So I was on um, I was on medical leave for about a month. And after I came back, um, now this is where things started to change. I felt like my colleagues were treating me differently. My boss also wasn't so friendly to me. And one day he sat me down and said, mm, I think, you know, maybe you don't have a future in anesthesia, you know, with, with what you have right now, this whole issue. And I, I felt really angry at that time because I felt like I gave my blood, sweat and tears to, to really, um, you, you know, to, to perform my duties, to give back. And then now this happens, right? So, um, so when he said that I didn't have a future and I thought, okay, it's, it's all right. I, I just want to take a, some time off. And I decided to move to uh, research. I, I thought like, hey, let me just try something different. So when I went to, to research, that was when um, this whole thing started because I felt like I, I come to work. There are days I, I don't even speak to anyone. It, it's a very different culture. People are... I, all, all I do is um, I look at petri dishes, I deal with machines, and it was a I very... in a research environment, people are more introverted. Yeah, I guess so. So I realized that I, I'm a people person. That That's, I mean, it was a good thing because it made me realize that I was a people person. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, I was in this whole thing and I was like thinking, oh my God, what do I do now? Like, everyone calls me doctor. I thought, I, I mean, now I'm not seeing patients, so... If I'm not seeing patients, then does that mean I'm not a doctor anymore? There was all these questions that were that were coming up. And 
yeah, that, I, I went through a really dark period, not knowing what to do. I felt so dumb. I couldn't even operate Excel. I <laughs> that, that was a real shock to me. Like I, I had to use Excel and I'm like, okay, what, how do I do this, you know? And so that there were a lot of things I, I did, I realized I didn't know. And it was so scary, like just venturing out into the unknown. So um, that, that was when I, I, I went to Google and I Google searched like for help, but I, I couldn't find anything. And the closest I found was Medic Footprints UK. So they were very um, kind to me. Like they, they gave me advice on what to do, what I can do. But the only problem was there was no local con context to whatever advice they gave. Okay. And yeah, so yeah, medicine is practiced very differently. And so mm. they don't have in you know, a Malaysian context, they can't relate to you in terms of what the medical profession, especially in the public sector, very different ways things are practiced. Yeah, exactly. So when I was going through this, 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 this really dark time, um, I think I was lucky that, you know, people come into your life for reasons. So I, I had people coming into my life who showed me that so many things I can do. Uh, there's so many options out there. And then I realized when I started dabbling and trying all these new things, then I realized like, wow, there's so much out here. You know, I managed to write two eBooks and publish it. Um, I started venture, I started educating myself on what finance means because I realized that a lot of doctors probably don't know finances. Like before that, I would shy away from the topic. So I, I managed to re-educate myself. And then after a year, I realized, oh, it's such, uh, it's so much brighter out here, right? And, but when I look back and I look at my colleagues and I realized that these people are still going through the same problem as I was going through. Like they were still in that rut and I'm trying to help them. But I realized that me as one person, is just too hard. Like nobody's going to listen to me. In my capacity, it's just not possible. That's when I decided, okay, maybe how about I start a medic footprint here, something it's not exactly the same as what UK is doing, but something for a local, uh, a more local context. Okay. So that's how I decided, hey, let's start this and see where it goes. So I actually started this Medic Footprints up somewhere end of 2019. Um, All right. We ran for a year. Um, it was mostly a site, a site thing, something I did on the weekends. Okay. And I saw that there was a lot of, um, like a lot of traction. People were responding, people were asking for help. There was, Brian, you cannot imagine the amount of emails I get asking for help. So and that's this when- is also, so, and, and I'm, I'm gonna come back to that. This is also really because, um, especially mental health challenges are something which in our society, and, and particularly, I, I suppose, among doctors as well, something you don't talk about. No, uh, no, funny, Brian. Um, I've because I'm also a um, uh, RTT practitioner where I help. Wait, what is RTT? It's a rapid transformational therapy. It's okay. a combination of uh, hypnotherapy, NLP, and CBT. So when okay. I do this, I, I'm, so, uh, I'm also... Uh, neuro linguistic programming, that's NLP. And what's the other one? Uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I also offer this on the side. So a lot of people that come to me are doctors with depression, with anxiety, and um, a lot of them are self-medicating. They're afraid that their peers might find out. So they and just- That's a very common thing that whether you're in a professional service, uh, whether you're a doctor, you're a, a lawyer, um, you're, you're a corporate person, basically mental health issues are something that you kind of keep it very much under wraps. And that's something that we need to probably as a society and also as a, uh, 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 you know, from a profession standpoint, from the medical profession, really highlight the need to to uh, get help for this as early as possible. Yes, I, I totally agree. Um, it is a stigma when, when you're a doctor in a hospital, because I've had colleagues who were on treatment. Back then, you can see that there is, um, you know, they, they, they will be made fun of behind their back. They'll be stigmatized for needing treatment and, and things like that. It's, it's, it's a huge taboo. Like nobody wants to be that person, right? So they rather yeah. 
self-medicate and deal with it by themselves. And that's hard when you are in, uh, suffering depression and stuff like that. Uh, actually, the, 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 the solution is for somebody to look at you from the outside rather than you looking in. Yeah, uh, completely. You, um, you're, you're right. I mean, depression, basically depression is, um, in uh, based on my medical training, it tells us that it's because of, um, what's that, um, imbalances of chemical in your brain. But based on uh, WHO's um, statistics, like 2.4 million people are suffering from depression. So depression is not... How, how is it that 2.4 million people have imbalances, chemical imbalances, right? So I think uh, depression is really a social issue. So to deal with it, it's not a pill or a drug. So we really need to find out where the depression is coming from. Yeah. Okay. And then so you, you, you did Medic Footprints. Uh, you got an affiliation with the guys from the UK. Am I correct? Uh, yeah, so um, Medic Footprints UK was already running and I told them that um, I see the value of what you're doing and I want to start something here with a more local context, not entirely the same, but something similar. So that's when we worked out a deal and how they were going to allow me to just plant my little seed in their backyard to see whether this, this thing would grow. So they, they gave me a space to, to just grow this thing. Okay, fantastic. And so then along the way, you also um, brought in some co-founders and other project uh, 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 project uh, mates to help you grow this little uh, seed, as you put it. So could you just walk us through what you did? I mean, how, how that came about? Okay, so um, the whole year while I was running it uh, on my own, uh, it was hard. There, there's no way... If you want to change the world, you can't do it yourself. You, you need a team, right? So over a course of a year, as um, as uh, Medic Footprints, like the solo person started to get traction, people um, people knew about us. And that's when um, I attracted the right people. We managed to attract the right people to come on our team. So over one year, that's when we found um, a co-founder, Dr. Vivek, who helped like really accelerated the growth. Because as one person, you can really do very little, but together you can do so much. And that's what happened when he came on board. This whole thing just exploded and we are just on a, we are on a tangential growth. Okay, fantastic. Now, let's talk a little bit about um, alternative career options for doctors. Um, and, and that's a big part of what you're pushing right now. So if, if, medic, if, if clinical practice is not for you, um, yes, there are alternatives. So um, maybe you could share uh, with us some of the alternative pr uh, professions that are open to doctors. Okay, um, so actually what we're really pushing is career opportunities. So there are people that would like clinical pathways. Now, um, that one, we are also helping them. The, the, the block there is actually, how do I specialize now with the contract system, right? So that part, we are thinking of ways to help doctors in, who want to go on this path to become and, specialists. And this contract system is, is a public health issue. Could you explain to us what this is all about and what are the limitations? So um, previously, all doctors, I mean, all medical students, after they return to Malaysia or even those that graduated here, they get absorbed into the government system. So you have a permanent job with the government that is guaranteed. Um, you don't even some some of the interviews are are just formalities, but you just you know you have a job, and your job is you 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 have the security of that job until either you retire or when you resign. Right. Now this contract system is, it's um, the issue with the contract system is this: um, you come in, you have a two year contract to become a houseman, and then after that you get a renewal of two years as a medical officer, after which only a small portion gets absorbed into the government system and become a permanent uh, medical officer. Right. Now, there's a huge portion that may not get their contracts renewed. Now, this is not the issue because they're not getting their contract renewed, but it's the implication of that because um, if you want to become a specialist, 
see if there's a medic medical specialist, there may be a parallel pathway that you can take. But sometimes, um, for, I'm just going to take one example. Um, it's uh, the internal medicine paper, right? So you do part one, part two, then you have paces, paces, which is the, the practical part. Now, you have to be able to, you, you would have to complete the rotation and still be um, in service to take this paper, the last paper. So if you're no longer in service, you haven't completed the rotation, then that's where the block is. That's for the medical pathway. Then if it's a surgical path, Malaysia only recognized the master's program in Malaysia. So you can take um, an external paper, but it's not recognized here. You will still have to go through the local master's program. Now the local master's program is not available for contract staff. There are prerequisites to be met before you can get into the system. And this will require you to be a permanent staff. So that is where the issue is. It's not because it's a contract, but it's because of, of the way the policy is structured that only recognizes the master system so that there's no other way for you to become a specialist by a uh, external paper. I see. So I think this is something that perhaps needs to be explored separately in a separate show in, in careers, for example. But so then what's, what options are there open? I mean, obviously the, 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 the very natural thing is either to go into research, you go into hospital administration, you go into the insurance prof uh, profession, uh, the pharma industry as well. There's also obviously a, a pathway for you to go into private practice. Um, is that what, And but now with digital health, you've got a whole plethora of options that are opening, uh, that are open to basically a clinician, basically either to work in the IT side of things in software development as domain experts and so forth. So what does Medic Footprints do in order to highlight these issues? Okay, so first and we options, will, rather. yeah, we, we, we actually bring it to the forefront because before this, when you try to search for this, it, it's not available. So what we're doing is we're putting all these options on the platform. We have doctors who have gone on to do all these careers to come and share and tell like what are the skills they need to acquire to get into all these different pathways. And we are connecting with private companies, private hospitals to put all the jobs onto our platform so that you know the doctors can come and everything is in one place. You know, I mean, if you try to go on Job Street, it's just, I don't know, I just found it a little confusing that it, there's no one place where everything is there and you can see the option. Okay, clinical, non-clinical, non-clinical in this sector, this sector, this sector. So that's what we are doing. We're going to put everything there. And on top of that, um, see, medical doctors, we, we have been trained in only one thing, which is how to treat a patient. Right? But there are so many other skills that you would need to acquire before you go into um, all the other alternative pathways. For instance, if you're going to open up a GP practice, you would think, I mean, usually people would think, oh, I can treat a patient, I can open up a GP. But that's not true. You need to learn how to manage a business before you start a GP. Because Correct. I think that is why GPs fail, because you think that treating a patient means the clinic is a success but they are all the back end part of it you know making sure your stock is you you have the stock take you know, you have a, a sop to make sure that that your medication is always there um you need to understand the admin part you understand the staffing part there's so many aspects to it which we are not equipped with so okay. one of the things that we are looking into is reskilling and upskilling doctors training them i mean helping them um learn new skills to so that they can venture into all these other different uh, segments. So what direction do you see Medic Footprints um, moving towards in the next 12 to 24 months? Obviously, right now, it's a, a social enterprise. Um, you, you need to make money, obviously, to be self-sustaining. So what, what, what is the direction you're going at? Um, so right now, we have about 2,000 followers. So that means only 2,000 people know of us. We aim that in maybe the next 24 months in two years, 
at least 50% of the doctors in Malaysia know of us is on our mailing list. And how, um, many, how many doctors are there in Malaysia currently? Uh, currently, based on MMC uh, statistics, it's about 87,000 or so. Okay. Yeah. So we are hoping to at least achieve like 50% of that. So 40 plus thousand on our mailing list. Um, we are going to, we are, we are now in talks with different, different um, companies to work with them and how to connect doctors with these companies because we feel that we understand the doctors. We understand how they think. We understand their fears. We understand their limitations. If, if it's a regular recruiter, I think they'll just, they, they won't know any of this. So what we see is that we become a very bespoke service where we can connect doctors, the right doctors for the right job. So that's okay. how we see ourselves. Okay. Selena, any final thoughts uh, uh, before we uh, end the show? Uh, no, I just think that, um, I, I mean, this is uh, something I would like to tell the doctors is that um, it's not the end of the world if you're not in clinical medicine because healthcare is huge. Clinical is just a small part of healthcare. Although we may be taught, we, we have been taught to think um, that clinical health is the entire healthcare, it is not. So yeah, I think it's a huge ocean there to play with. Now, Selena, thank you very much for taking your time to come on the show. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for having me. It's a real pleasure. I'm Brian Fernandez, and I've been speaking to Dr. Selena Chu of Medic Footprints Malaysia on Vistax Health and Wellness Show. Now, this video will be on our Facebook and LinkedIn sites, as well as our website, www.vistax.asia. Please subscribe or like our Facebook and LinkedIn pages.